All right, ladies and gentlemen, in this video, we are going to go over evaluating trigonometric functions using the unit circle, because that is one of the biggest reasons why the unit circle is so powerful. So to really understand that, let's go back to what we previously talked about into special right triangles. And if you remember special right triangles, something that's really important about them is that they are right triangles. So we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? And if you remember the relationships of those, the two legs were going to be the same. And then the hypotenuse was just whatever that length was multiplied by the square root of two. And then we had our lovely 30, 60, 90 triangle. And that one had a very similar relationship, but it was a little different, right? So if this is going to be our 60 degrees, um, then this would have to be our 30 degrees. And then we said, well, let's make the short leg X. And then my hypotenuse is two X. And then my long leg would be X square root of three, right? And we use those to be able to build out um, the points on the unit circle. But there's two things I want you to remember about when you see a right triangle. The first one you should always remember because this is probably the first thing that you were taught about right triangles, and that is the Pythagorean theorem. So whenever you see a right triangle, just know that you can now apply the Pythagorean theorem. We can't apply that for oblique triangles. We can only apply it for right triangles. The other thing I want you to think about when you see a right triangle is also trig. And if you remember trig, and we're going to be talking about our trigonometric functions. And in this video, I'm just going to focus on sine, cosine, and tangent. So at this point, I'm hoping that you have a remembrance of sine, cosine, and tangent. And in reality, all they really are is a ratio. When I say the sine of an angle, what I'm referring to is what is the comparison of, if you remember, the opposite side of that triangle compared to the hypotenuse. And that is all relative to whatever angle we're talking about. And I'll go through some examples so you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And if you remember cosine of theta, that is going to be the relationship and basically how big is the adjacent compared to the hypotenuse. And then lastly, we're going to have tangent, which is going to be the relationship or the comparison of opposite over the hypotenuse. Now remember, we always know the hypotenuse is the largest side of a right triangle, but um, the opposite and the adjacent is all going to be relative to what angle we are referring to. Now in the 45, 45, 90 triangle, that can be a little fuzzy, but if I said, what is the sine of 45 degrees? Now again, in this case, it doesn't matter because the opposite side of 45 is gonna be X. If I'm talking about this 45 degree angle, the opposite side is X. If I'm talking about this 45 degree angle, the opposite side is X. So no matter what, we're always going to get X as our opposite side for a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And then our hypotenuse, remember, is always directly across from 90 degrees, and that's going to be a X over a square root of two. So if I say the sine of 45 degrees, and again, we're not dealing with any numbers of the side lengths. We don't even know what they are. But again, that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. And in this case, we can simplify this we can divide out the x's to a one over a square root of two. And then what we can do is rationalize the denominator to get that radical off. And we'll get a final answer here of sine of 45 degrees is equal to the square root of two over two. And that should be a number that kind of rings a bell with you on, on the videos that we've been working with thus far. Then if we look at cosine of theta, now again, we can pick 30 degrees or 60 degrees in this case, um, I'm just going to pick 60 degrees. So if I say cosine of 60 degrees, now here in this case, it's a little bit different. The opposite side in this case is X over square root of three. The adjacent side, which is always the side between the angle you're referring to and the 90 degree is X. But again, so cosine in this case is adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, it's going to be X over a two X. Now, again, I can simplify that. So the cosine of 60 degrees is simply just going to be a one half. Now, again, notice that would change if I did the cosine of 30 degrees, because now the adjacent side would be x square root of three over a two x, okay? So just remember that it all depends on what the angle that you are referring to for inside of your function. And we can also do this with tangent. Um, let's just do tangent of 30 degrees. So if I did a tangent of 30 degrees, the opposite side would be directly across from it, which in this case was going to be an x, and the adjacent side would be x over square root of three or x times the square root of three. I don't know why I wrote a two. So it's gonna be x times the square root of three. And then again, just like we did in the first example, let's rationalize the denominator. 
And what we'll see here is that the tangent of 30 degrees is going to equal a square root of three over a three. Now the sine and the cosine should be a resemblance of you. You should like recognize those kind of numbers. But the tangent might be a little different, right? Because we didn't see that on the unit circle, but that's okay, right? Because I'm gonna show you where these points um, or how all this kind of makes sense um, with this and the unit circle. So it really comes, comes down to what we did with these special right triangles, right? We first started with the special right triangles of just understanding the relationships of the sides, but then to create the right triangle, what we did was something really special. We took these special right triangles and what we did is we say, well, you know what? X is cool. Like I don't mind X and you know, to understand the relationships, but what about if we made the hypotenuse one? We say, all right, we're still gonna have a right triangle, but if we made the hypotenuse one, then this would be a square root of two over two, and this would be a square root of two over two, right? Because remember to go to leg to hypotenuse, you multiply by square root of two. To go from a hypotenuse to leg, you divide by square root of two, and then we rationalize the denominator. And the same thing over here. What about if we take this 30, 69 triangle, if I go ahead and say, all right, so that's gonna be my 30 degrees. If we make the hypotenuse one, then we know my short leg is divided by two, and the long leg is going to be a square root of three divided by two. And then we can do this one more time. I think I have enough room. I'll just try to, I'll fit this in real quick. Just enough, there we go. And so then we also turn it up on its side to get our 60 degree angle. And remember then this was going to be a one half. You know what, let's go ahead and move all this stuff just a little bit more over. So therefore I can write it in there. All right, so that was going to be my one half. And then you remember this is going to be a square root of three over two, and this is all one. Now, again, the reason why we did that was to create that first quadrant of the unit circle. And so if you remember what we did when we created that first quadrant of the unit circle, we aligned all these special right triangles in the same first quadrant. And what that did was now that went ahead and created this kind of circle for these points, because here's all my triangles going on from on there. And since they all had, since they all had a radius of one, then they went ahead and created that triangle, right? Do, 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 so here's the cool, important thing about this, is when we put them all in there, that created that first triangle. And you might resemble, or you might remember what these coordinate points are. Actually, let me rephrase that. You better remember what these points are if you've watched all these videos and you've been going through this you know, kind of course with me. So we have square root of three over two, comma one half, and this one is going to be a square root of two over two, comma square root of two over two. And this one was going to be a one half comma square root of three over two. Okay, now the important thing that I want to bring up to you is what about the reason why this was all important, the reason why the unit circle is so powerful is because let's go back to our trigonometric statements, right? We know that the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now for over here, it wasn't that bad, right? We took, you know, the side length x over x squared of two, and we got it there. Done a little bit of work, but it wasn't that bad. Well, here's something that's cool. What about if we do it on these triangles? If I make the hypotenuse one, and I now say, all right, so here's a 45 degree angle. Now, if I take the square root of two over two, put it over one, right? Because that's the opposite side. So if I have a square root of two over two, and then I put it over one. Well, what we recognize here is that's just going to be a square root of two. Or over, sorry, that's just going to be a square root of two over two, right? We're kind of simplifying things here because anything, as long as my hypotenuse is one, whatever was in my numerator is just going to be the answer, right? So this just simplifies the square root of two over two. Now, here's the important thing that I want you to recognize here. This is one of the coordinate points on our unit circle. So what we need to remember now, what we need to know is, are we talking about the X coordinate or are we talking about the Y coordinate? Well, to simplify the process here, and it'll make more sense once I do a 30, 60, 90, but the another definition of sine is, yes, opposite over hypotenuse works for right triangles. But when we're referring to points that are on the unit circle, 
sine of your angle also can refer to the y coordinate of that point that's on the inner circle. Now let's go back and do a cosine one. What if I did a cosine? I don't know why I did this. I'm sorry, fine. Let's do uh, the cosine. Well, actually, I wrote that wrong. So let me. So we have that as that. That is correct. But then if I wrote this as a sine of 45 degrees, there we go. Then I'll make. I just want to make sure I don't want people, if they're like taking these as notes, to get that confused. So that breaks down to the sine of y. So now let's go and look at the cosine, right? So I know, you know, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. But if I want to say, well, what about the cosine of 30 degrees? Again, any right triangle is going to work, but look what's nice about this when the hypotenuse is one. Now I need to do the cosine of 30 degrees. I take my adjacent side, which is always between my angle and my right angle. So that is going to be a square root of three over two divided by one. Again, do we need the one? No, it's just gonna be a square root of three over two. So this should make sense because if we're saying sine of theta represents y, and then we know then that cosine of 30 degrees, which would be this angle right here, is going to represent the x coordinate. So we could say cosine of any angle, or a cosine of any angle that has a point on the unit circle, that co x coordinate is going to represent that value. So cosine of theta, also represents the x value um, of your point on the inner circle. So sine of, sine of theta is y, cosine of theta is x. And then last but not least, <laughs> leech, last but not least, we have tangent of theta. That is just going to be our y over x. Now that's not as visible because like I mentioned up here, we don't have a y over x as our corner point, right? But we do know that um, if sine is y, cosine is x, and we know that tangent is going to be like that opposite over the adjacent. So that's really just going to be, if, you, if you're saying, if you think about this coordinate point, right, we remember that this, if we're looking at this first triangle, this represents that length and this represents that length, right? So if you think about 30 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse would be one half over the square root of three over two, right? Opposite over adjacent. So that's why it makes sense that tangent of theta would then now be a y over a x. So what are we going to do with this information? Well, the cool thing is now with this information, we can actually evaluate trigonometric functions. So one thing we might get, you know, as a problem on a test or from our teacher is something to be like, what is the sine of five pi over six? Or your teacher might say, what is going to be the cosine of negative two pi over three? Or your teacher might say, what about the tangent of nine pi over four? So how are we going to go about them? How are we going to do this? Well, I actually have a step-by-step -step process for you that I want you to be able to follow. Now, you don't have to follow this process every single time. When you're first, be when you're first learning this, I think it's really, really important, it's helpful. But then as you practice this over and over, and don't worry, I have some practice problems for you, but as you go through this practice problem, you're gonna see that this process can go by much faster. So here's the process. For step number one is to sketch the angle. So what we're gonna do is we're going to sketch the angle. Step number two, identify the quadrant. Why is the quadrant so important? Well, because remember, if we're sketching the angle, we wanna know the quadrant, right? We wanna make sure we have that plus or minus. Um, we wanna make sure we know which quadrant that is going to be. Actually, I'm taking that back. Yeah, well, now we we want to be able to, sorry, um, sketch the quadrant. Ske hold on, let me go back through this. Let me make sure I made some changes to it. Quadrant be felt be helpful. We want to make sure we sketch it. Now we don't want to sketch it, and then what we want to do is we want to know the reference angle. So once we know the reference angle, then we want to know what the point is. Then you could say the quadrant. I guess quadrant wasn't that bad in there. Then we know what the quadrant is, and then we're going to evaluate using the function. Okay, so let me kind of go through this um, step by step. So if I want to evaluate sine of five pi over six, now again, we practiced this in the previous videos on how to do this. So I'm going to go through this. Five pi over six is going to be pi over six short of six pi over six, which would be half of it, right? So I know that in this case, this is going to be a five pi over six. I know my, my reference angle, right? I could say theta prime 
is equal to a pi over a six. So reference angle is pi over six. Now, again, what do I know about that in the unit circle? Pi over six, that reference angle of pi over six is going to have a coordinate point, right? If you remember pi over six is gonna have a coordinate point of square root of three over two comma one half. Now, again, the next thing is I know that's the point, then I gotta to go to my quadrant. Well, this is in the second quadrant, so I know that my x is going to be negative. But do we care about the x is negative? No, because we only are concerned about what the y coordinate is, right? Because sine of your angle represents the y coordinate. So even though this coordinate point is a negative square root of three over two comma one half, we know the answer is going to just be a one half, which is the y coordinate. Let's do another one. Cosine of negative two pi over three. So again, this is an angle that's in the negative direction. So we're gonna go this way. And again, this one is going to have a reference angle of pi over three, because again, three pi over three would be pi halfway around the circle. So in this case, we have reference angle is going to be a pi over a three. Now the reference angle of pi over three, which is gonna be 60 degrees, is one half comma square root of three over two. This is in the third quadrant. So now we know that the both the x and the y's are going to be negative, right? However, in this case, we're dealing with cosine, so we're only looking at the x coordinate. So in this case, we're dealing with a negative one half. Let me do this. So it'd be the coordinate point would be a negative one half, um, negative square root of three over two, right? But since cosine of your angle only represents the x coordinate, we know this answer is going to be a negative one half. And let me actually just write in this quad, this point here. So it's be negative square root of three over two comma one half. Okay, now let's do the last one, which is going to be tangent of nine pi over four. Hopefully you remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you go all, if eight pi over four would be a whole revolution, right? So I'm gonna go all the way around the circle. That's eight pi over four. And then I need to go an extra pi over four. So that's gonna be right there. And so now we can see that the reference angle in this case is just going to be a pi over four. So if we go back and understand our unit circle, we're gonna have square root of two over two comma square root of two over two. So it is going to be in the first quadrant. So that's good, square root of two over two, square root of two over two. And remember tangent is y over x. Well, what happens? Doesn't matter if it's a fraction and radicals, guys. What happens when you have the exact same thing over the exact same thing? It's just gonna equal one. So in this case, the tangent of nine pi over four it's just your y-coordinate over your x-coordinate, which is equal to one. But ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna take some practice. So I have some practice problems for you to be able to complete in the, um, in the document down below. Go ahead and get started on that because don't worry, the next video is all about graphing using the unit circle and I don't have a lot of, and I don't have any practice problems for you on that one. So go ahead and enjoy getting used to evaluating in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.